Today I'm doing a Citroen C1 rear brake shoe replacement. The foot brake is working okay on this car, but the handbrake is down on efficiency on the right hand side. And I suspect that the handbrake lever on the leading brake shoe has seized at its pivot point. We're going to go and take it apart and find out and I'll show you how to replace the shoes while we're there. Safety first, raise the rear of the car, place it on axle stands, remove the rear wheels and don't forget to chock a front wheel. Remove the torque screw that holds the drum, making sure that the handbrake is off. Use a rubber mallet just to hit the uh, drum a few times and the drum should come off. Aha, yes. If the drum doesn't come off, if it's still a bit tight, particularly around here, it may be tight round there on the hub. There are two M8 screw holes, which allow you to put screws in, wind down a turn at a time each to withdraw the drum. If you find that the drum is still tight, you can release the adjustment. With the drum still in place, loop through one of the uh, wheel bolt holes and bring it round to roughly the one o'clock position there and look up through the hole so that you can see this toothed wheel here on the adjuster. And you want to turn that toothed wheel clockwise from its perspective in order to release the adjustment. Hoover the bulk of the loose brake dust away first and then clean down with brake cleaner. Make sure to put a tray or drip can of some description below the brake to catch the excess fluid and dust. No need to go mad, just get the worst of it out. With one finger holding the back of the brake retaining pin, use a pair of pliers to push in and turn through 90 degrees the retaining pin locker and then take the retaining pin out. Do the same on the other one. With a pair of pliers or grips, pull the trailing brake shoe out of its locator at the lower portion, the same with the leading shoe, and then release the lower spring. The brake shoes should now release from the piston and with a pair of pliers, remove the upper spring. The leading brake shoe will now come out, bringing with it the uh, adjuster thread. Lower the trailing brake shoe, and again with a pair of pliers, pull on the end of the cable, push the spring and release the cable from the brake shoe. That is definitely uh, rusted and seized. Before we can get on with putting it all back together, we need to give it a clean. Now I like this uh, three in one heavy duty cleaner and degreaser, mainly because it foams up like this and the foam traps all the brake dust. We don't want to just brush the brake dust and cause clouds of it in the air. So use a nylon brush and go all round and we'll get as much of the brake dust as possible off. And then while that's still wet, rinse it down with some brake cleaner. Don't forget to rinse the hub too. Then with a steel brush, make sure to give the hub a good clean where the drum locates onto the hub. If you can use a wire brush in a drill, then do so. Again, a good rinse down and let it dry. And whilst you're doing it, give your wheel threads are blasting out as well. Any grease or dirt out of there. The brake shoes, when they're in position, they have three contact points per brake shoe. Here, here, and here, and here, here, and here on the opposite side. Particularly up near the top, near the cylinder, you can see where there's some rust, where the movement of the brake shoes has rubbed through the paint. So I'm going to give these points a quick rub down with some 150 emery. But also, there's a bit of rust around the hole where the retaining pins come through. So I'm giving that a clean too. And just wash that dust off. Like with discs, it's important that the drum goes back on square and runs square. Or you'll get vibration from the brakes. In just the same way as you might with discs. And again. Clean the dust down. Now where I've got a bit of rust on the running faces and around and around the hole where the uh, retaining pins come in, once it's dried I'm going to put a little bit of rust converter on there just to slow down any future corrosion and hopefully create a nice surface 
for the new shoes to run on. Whilst that's doing its thing, pull the spring back and make sure that the cable runs freely in and out. You don't want to find you've got a uh, seized cable after you've put it all back together because then you'd have to take it all apart to disconnect this again. On these cars, the left and right cables can be changed independently. I've given that about 10 minutes. I'm going to give it a, another coat on the, on the worst uh, affected areas. It's reasonably important to try and keep this wet because when, once it dries out, it stops reacting. A tip there for you if, if you're uh, ever using it on a bit of bodywork. Whilst you're cleaning out the threads for the wheel bolts, give your wheel bolts a clean too. Once the rust converter has uh, done its job, use a rag with a little brake cleaner soaked on it just to uh, get the last of any liquid off. We're now ready to start putting it back together. The first thing we need to do is transfer the self-adjusting mechanisms to the new shoes. From your box of shoes, compare the shoes and make sure you've got the correct hand because these are handed. Now the way I've found to get this self-adjusting mechanism off the uh, trailing shoe is to bend that down like so and it'll unhook from there. Before putting it on the new shoe, clean it down, clean all the dust off, particularly from inside there. Put the spring back in place on the self-adjuster, then into its hole in the brake shoe, which is the lower of those two holes. The upper one is for the top spring. And then fit into place with a little stretch above the uh, little rivet that's on the uh, handbrake lever arm. Now this little piece, be sure to get that in the right way around, but it goes in like so. Now we do the other side with your nylon brush, give the threads a scrub, take the adjuster wheel all the way off and give the threads on the inside a blast with brake cleaner, then wind it on all the way down to the bottom. Take a photograph of that if you're uh, worried about forgetting how it goes on. Don't tighten that down tight against the spring, just, just loosely to the end and back it off an eighth or so. The threaded portion of the self-adjuster now goes through. Finally, just before we start putting it back together, dab a little high temperature brake grease on the contact points for the uh, new shoes and also just put a very light smear around the contact face for the inside of the drum. I'm using Ceratec for this purpose, it's uh, specially developed for brakes. There are one or two other products you could use, but uh, please don't use copper grease. It's not suitable for this application. Don't forget to clean the inside of your drum. First job is to put the handbrake cable back into the handbrake lever on the trailing shoe. So push back the spring and fit the uh, end of the cable like so. Of course you need uh, three hands for that. Make sure that you haven't mislaid this little piece, not forgetting that it goes in there. You can see how when the brakes operate, it moves the spring lever. At this point, by the way, while you're handling the new shoes, do make sure that you give your hands a wash so that you're not uh, got any uh, contaminants on your fingers. Having cleaned the upper spring, hook it into the trailing shoe, push the adjuster under the cylinder, make sure that the slot in this end of the adjuster is vertical, get that end of the adjuster into place and with a four or five millimeter screwdriver push the spring home. You can now get the shoes seated onto the pistons. Give your lower spring a clean and hook it into the two shoes. Hook the leading shoe behind the lower stop and use your, your grips to put the trailing shoe into place. It's the leading shoe that tends to want to come away but so uh, to do so very gently, it should stay. Return your retaining clips back into position in the opposite way to which you got them off. Do the trailing shoe first, then push the leading shoe into position, bring the clip through, hold the clip in position with one hand and the shoe into place. It is a little awkward, of course. Naturally, you wouldn't be working on brakes if it wasn't awkward. But hey presto, there you go. Have a little look, make sure you haven't accidentally got any grease onto any of the braking surfaces. If you have, use a cloth with some brake cleaner and just wipe it off. Return the drum to position, not forgetting the retaining screw. Just tighten that down hand tight. Only once you've got both brakes back together, 
put the wheels back on, drop it down on the ground. Don't forget to tighten up the wheel nuts once you've got it on the ground. Start the engine so that you get uh, servo assistance. And with the handbrake released, press the brake pedal firmly four or five times. To settle the shoes into position, get the self adjusters to adjust up. Then take the car on a short test drive, do some forward and reverse braking stops to settle the shoes into position better. Uh, and then when you come back, adjust the handbrake if necessary. Hopefully if the handbrake adjustment was correct before you started the work and shouldn't need doing it again. Tighten it or loosen it so that the handbrake is fully on between five and eight clicks. If you got value from this video, consider supporting the channel and I shall see you next time.